Right, let's have a look at the whole audio engine situation. Now, I always, always, always recommend using an external USB audio interface when making music with the Surface. However, I've come to understand that many, many people out there just want to use it as it is. They just want to use a headphone output and they want to mix and make music without having to fuss around with external peripherals. That's all fine, but there are reasons why I recommend a USB audio interface. It just makes life simpler. Well, and also more complicated because you've got to carry an extra piece of gear with you. But the main reasons, let me try and big up the idea of an audio interface. The reasons why you want an audio interface, a USB audio interface, are physicality to start with. You've got proper connections. You can plug a microphone in here, you can phantom power it, you can plug a guitar in here, headphones, you've got individual controls over gain, over monitoring, over headphone volume control and output volume control. It's a comprehensive solution, even in a little box like this. It's going to give you the ability to make high quality recordings, to plug everything in, and it's going to work very, very well with Cubase or your selected door. The onboard sound, not so much. I mean, obviously you can't plug anything into it. It has a microphone built in, but there's no line in. There's no way to get sound into Cubase unless, I mean, if you're using purely MIDI and virtual instruments, well then yes, you do have an output through the headphone socket here on the side or through the onboard speakers, if you're really going a bit lo-fi. But all these things are possible. And I just wanted to show you how you set up both of these within Cubase to make them work the best for you. You will find the audio settings under Studio, Studio Setup, and then VST Audio System at the bottom there. I've currently got the Fast Track Duo ASIO driver loaded. Now ASIO, A-S-I-O, it's very, very important. It stands for Audio System In-Out, and it's Steinberg's own driver protocol to allow low latency audio. What's low latency audio? Oh, well, I'm gonna demonstrate that in a second, but essentially it's the delay between, between hitting the key and hearing a sound. That is latency. That is the time it takes for the processor in your system to go, oh, a key's been pressed. Oh, I'm gonna generate some audio. Boom, I'm gonna stick it onto the output. That is latency and that can be playable more or less real time, or it can be unplayable and far too long to enable you to make any music. And what's important for me in a system like this in trying to make music is that we have very low latency while not being a drag on the processor. And an audio interface, a USB audio interface with a decent ASIO driver is going to do that. The onboard sound, not quite so much, but we'll come to that in a second. So with the, the Fast Track Duo selected, I've got good sound coming out of here. High quality to my speakers on proper jack cables, all that sort of business. And the latency is very good. I can play this in real time. With no bother. Excellent. Now, if I switch to the onboard sound, there'll be a little bit of a difference. Now this is now coming out of here. You can hear it crackle. Now what you hopefully can see and hear is there's a delay between striking a key and hearing a sound. It's not a massive delay, but it makes it really unplayable. It's as if I'm playing a piano that's down the other end of the hall. That's because the input output latency of using the onboard sound, the standard Windows drivers, is about 20 milliseconds. 20 milliseconds is too long. What you're always aiming for is under 10 milliseconds. For me, 10 milliseconds starts to feel like real time. That's what this is giving us. However, the standard Windows drivers are going to give us 20 milliseconds. Now, believe me, that's far better than I ever used to. It used to be standard 500 milliseconds, as in half a second. That used to be the standard latency, <laughs> the standard buffer size, the, the space of memory in which uh, Windows would give the CPU in order to process audio. 
In order to maintain a stable stream of audio, it would give it half a second to play with. That's why whenever you pressed play media player, it would always take half a second for the actual playback to begin. These days, it's much, much better, but it's still nowhere near real time in terms of music software. Now that's not a problem if you're just mixing, if you're just playing stuff back and, and editing. It is a problem if you're trying to play something or if you're trying to monitor through effects through software. So you're plugging your guitar in and you're trying to, to listen to that as you play and as you record. But of course there's no input to the surface without an external audio interface, so that's perhaps not an issue. But I'm just making a point. So can we do something about this? Well, luckily we can. There's a third party application called ASIO for All, and that's essentially like a wrapper for the Windows driver and fools Windows and Cubase into believing it's a proper ASIO audio interface. The result of that is that it allows it to run at lower latency and so gives us a workable solution. Let's have a look at that. So if we go to my list here again and select this time ASIO for All. Now this has dropped the latency down to under 10 milliseconds, just like this. And now... It's suddenly playable. It's suddenly become playable. So this is now a low enough latency to use the onboard sound, the headphone output, properly without any bother, without any lag, without any drag. And it can actually probably go a little bit keener than that if I push it a little bit. Now let me bring up the controls for ASIO for all. It's under this little green button here. So the first thing you need to do is hit the spanner and that will bring up the advanced settings. And then you'll see these two outputs, the Realtek second output and the Realtek uh, regular output. The regular one refers to speakers, the second one refers to the headphone output. Under both of those, what you want set is that first output, the 44.1 to 48 kilohertz output. That is the one you want activated, not the other one, not the 8 to 192 kilohertz. That's really for sort of Blu-ray and DVD playback. It's not got anything to do with making music, so you need that first one selected. So just to recap that then, with ASIO for All, you download it from asioforall.com, link again in the description, download it, install it, it will find your audio drivers, you load it up in Cubase so that the control panel appears, you go to advanced, you set it to that first output, the 44.1 to 48 kilohertz output. That's the one that you want to set it to on both the second output and the first audio output driver. Yeah, are you getting all of that? Great. Now, the other slight issue is how do you swap between headphones and speakers? So, you know, you're on the bus and you're doing all your music on your Surface Pro and your mate goes, oh, well, can I have a listen? And the rest of the bus goes, yeah, we can all join in. You go, right, I'll just stick it on speakers. You unplug that, nothing happens. Hmm. Yes, what you need to do is go into connections here. And under there, you can set the output to the other two outputs here. It's not automatic because they are separate drivers. So unplugging the headphones doesn't automatically kick the speakers into being. It does in Windows because that's designed to do that. But in your audio software, you have to specify your outputs. If you're using an audio interface like this, it has a headphone socket on it. So that's always present. You've always got a line output to your speakers and a headphone socket. That's one of the reasons why it's so much better. However, if you just swap those around, then it should, with a bit of luck, come out of your speakers. Lovely. And to go back to my headphones, you know, go over here, there's my audio connections. Uh, where am I? Just plugging my headphones back in, yeah, just a minute, just a minute. Ah, there, we there, we there you go. Easy, easy, innit? <laughs>